Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host, coming to you from the, I don't know what this is, I think it's a pilot on uh, Slover Avenue, Cherry Avenue exit off of I-10 in Fontana, California. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> it's Groundhog Day. And, uh, you know, sometimes things just repeat themselves. So I had a load that the delivery time was 0500 this morning at Cisco over in Riverside. And uh, it's right off the 215. And uh, so I get there. I actually got there around 3.30 this morning. I drove from Kingman, Arizona. And um, so I just kind of, I was on the other side of the building basically from where I needed to go in. So, you know, around like, I don't know, quarter to five or whatever, I roll around to the, where the entrance is. And there's like 8,000 trucks coming from both directions on this street trying to get in there. And the line is moving painfully slow and it it took me um, an hour and a half plus from the time I was like sitting there with my left turn signal on to go into the entrance to the time that the gal signed me in um, and but what I did is, you know, so then I, I get a door right away, like once I got in the place. It was easy to park and I put myself in the sleeper berth. And this is where, you know, man, things kind of went south a little bit. So I don't get called till around noon to say that I'm unloaded and here's how much money I got to pay the lumpers. So, you know, it takes like a half an hour to get a express code. Um, I, I finally get everything, but then there's a claim, but it's not just any claim. It's a shortage of like 138 cases, but seven different line items. So of course I have to input all that, scan all these pages, send it off, call claims, get that information and then you know get everything buttoned up and do my report well so I so I had already been like I mean I'd been there for hours and hours obviously like so I put myself on personal conveyance because I want to transit from the receiver to a truck stop so I picked the nearest truck stop but you know, this is Southern Cal, and while I like coming here, um, cause stuff pays good coming in and going out, um, but I, I start heading there, I get to the truck stop. It's a truck stop I've been to one other time, and it's a truck stop that, you know, along with the fuel islands and all that stuff, you could fit like 80 trucks in there. But at two o'clock in the afternoon, there was already like 170 trucks in there and I'm only slightly exaggerating. So, so there was no parking. And um, I had just tapped on Pilot's app and asked for directions on Google and Google took me to some fucking residential neighborhood and so then I had to rework all that and, and find, find where I needed to be. So I get over there, no parking. So while I'm there though, I know that when you're PC to try to find parking, you kind of have to document that the place you went has no parking. So I put myself off duty for a second and I document that there's no parking. I put myself back on PC but because Omnitrax sucks, um, like sucks really bad, and I was worried that I was holding up the, 
the slow movement of trucks anyway, I, you know, I creep forward. And what happens? You know what I'm going to say, right? I, I hit the drive line because it didn't transfer it back to PC, even though I tapped the button a bunch of times. So I had already been in an off-duty status, either sleeper berth, off-duty, or PC, for um, you know, probably like nine hours and 50 minutes, something stupid like that, right? And because I was trying to, you know, kind of not be in the way, and I wasn't, I just didn't wait and verify, I ended up on the drive line. Fortunately, um, the load I'm picking up out of here tomorrow, which is going up to Salt Lake City, is I don't have to pick up till 11. So, you know, I, I, um, I got plenty of time to get a 10 hour break in. So I came to a different truck stop, no parking. So what I did though is I went inside to get a soda and um, I overheard the dude at the, at the um, counter saying there were 14 people in line for showers. And I think they only have like two or three showers here. So I went ahead and got um, a reservation. And then because um, our drop yard is literally like right down the street. I just went over there and dropped my trailer and I bobtailed back here to get a shower. So hopefully I'll be able to get a shower at some point this evening. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One is um, Freight Waves has its 500 largest four um for higher carriers list out. Um, I don't want to talk about any other company other than Prime, um, but Prime is number 13 on the list, um, up from number 15 last year. Um, and I will talk about one other company because I was like kind of looking how the rank, the rankings kind of shifted a little bit here and there. So the third number 13 company last year was US Express. They're actually down to 16. I mean, it's it's a it, you know, it's like we're talking like 20 trucks, 30 trucks. Um, Prime, though, has less than 8,000 trucks listed. Um, and about um, like 14,000 trailers, um, 14,000 and change. But I did notice that the, tra the tractor to trailer ratio is less than, um, less than one to two. Um, so we have less than twice as many trailers as we do tractors. Um, but I also see at the drop yard, if you've ever been to the drop yard here in Fontana, you know those guys, um, like I don't know exactly how it's set up, but they have a contract and they, they basically put all the reefer units on new prime trailers. The trailer I got on my backer that's attached to me is a 232 series. But they already have 247 series trailers over there um, that they've that they're working on getting in into the into the fleet. Um, the cool thing about that 232 trailer that I have that I brought out here from uh, Nebraska is I uh, I dropped a 172 trailer at at Smithfield when I picked that up. So that was that was cool. Um, and this trailer is brand new. It's pretty nice. Uh, everything's well. It's filthy, but you know, everything works, everything's bright and shiny. Um, so that's cool. Um, so anyway, that's the rankings. The other thing I wanted to talk about real quick, and I, I, I know I shouldn't have to say this, but I, I watch, um, and these videos aren't usually very long, but there's this, there's this, um, there's this YouTube channel called Live Storms Media. And they put up a lot of videos every day. I think they have people all over the country that film stuff for them and they use drones and they're usually good. Um, there's not a lot of narration. You're just seeing what they're seeing basically. Um, and, but they're not always live. A lot of them are recorded, but sometimes they, they do go live. But they've had a ton of videos from like Memphis, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, other places in Texas. Uh, Oklahoma and stuff and 
you know, I've even commented on a couple, right? And and here's what I want to say about this. And and also, you know, Wyoming is still like, a, it's been a mess all winter. 80's been closed a bunch of times. There was this incident the other day where they, they there was a pile up, they get 80 open and two hours later, there's another pile up, right? But let's go back to like the Dallas, the Central Texas thing. I'm gonna tell you something about hockey and try to use it as an analogy for what's going on in Texas. So when I was a kid, I grew up on the sh near Lake Ontario in Western New York. Hockey's a big deal uh, where I grew up. And, um, and I played hockey in, in basically every form you can think of. And when I say every form, I'm gonna list them all. So ice hockey, um, roller skate hockey, floor hockey, street hockey, then hockey on um, air table hockey, um, and also the little uh, things where you just pushed it in and turned it and you know, like, and the men kind of went this way. I played that kind of hockey too. Every kind of hockey you can imagine, right? And I want to tell you something about hockey. And now, I am i wasn't a good hockey player. I, I certainly wasn't, you know, I wasn't even like junior college caliber probably. But I know some things about hockey. And here's what I know about hockey. When you play ice hockey, you don't wear roller skates. Why? Because those rubber tires on the roller skates, they work great when you're on a concrete floor inside a building. But on the ice, on the pond, uh, you'll break your neck. You gotta wear, you gotta have blades. Um, and, and here's my analogy. When you're driving on ice, if you have little rubber tires, they don't work, right? Nothing works on ice, okay? Except maybe studded snow tires. I don't even know if chains would really work that well because they can't, they're, they're too bulky to kind of dig in. Studded snow tires, could do okay um but the best way to drive on ice is while sitting still in a parking lot i've watched video after video and you can go to live storms video um live storms media i've watched video after video of vehicles completely stopped just sliding all the way to the shoulder okay down in texas like i said memphis oklahoma i watched truckers have to get towed up a hill on I-20 near Rockwall, Texas. And I looked at the road and I'm like, I don't, I do not feel bad at all for them. And I hope they're all getting charged like 8,000 bucks for that tow, right? Ice is an absolute no-go in any vehicle, really, right? Like why, why kill your, why get yourself killed, right? It's a no-go. Okay, it's especially a no-go in a semi. Semi, you cannot control anything, right? You could be completely stopped and slide off the road. Guess what? Well, your speed was still excessive for the conditions, right? Because you even went on that road, okay? And in Arkansas, and I've seen this firsthand because one time I went to a delivery um, where the road was okay. Things had worn down to the concrete. But every single, you know, centimeter of shoulder, on-ramp, off-ramp, still coated completely in ice. And I and I saw enormous truck wrecks. Like, like they were like violent truck wrecks. They weren't just trucks getting together. They were trucks like that collided and then blasted into the woods and stuff. I saw them, you know, in fact, I did a video. This is back when I was at GP Transco. Ice is a no-go. I don't care how much experience you got. I don't care. I don't care if your fleet manager, your driver manager said, I will kill your kids if you don't make this delivery. It's a no-go, right? And. You know, I've tried, I told my son this when there was a big storm in Buffalo. Actually, I told him afterwards because I didn't talk to him beforehand. When a, a region is shut down, okay, it, 
does, it makes zero sense to even attempt to risk your life, risk your career, risk your vehicle, risk other people's lives. Because here's the thing, right? Like if you're weighing 70,000 pounds and you're coming down like a, off a bridge or um, a, an on-ramp or something, you could easily really mess somebody up and be doing everything humanly possible to not do it. You could, you could start down that ramp at one mile an hour and still lose control and not be able to stop and really, really hurt somebody. And you're gonna get sued for it, okay? But like I told my son, when a region is shut down, guess who's not showing up for work? Those $20 an hour dock workers. So even if you get to where you need to be, Guess who's not going to be there? All those people that were like, hey, snow day, snow day. I know you want to get unloaded, but they, but they're, you know, in some cases, local authorities are like, don't go on the road. So these people are like, hey, I'm taking a snow day. It doesn't matter if they needed the money. They're not willing to risk wrecking their car or breaking their frabbits, slipping on ice to go unload your truck so you can then get back on the road empty while it's all icy, okay? And that applies to massive snowstorms too, of course, like they had up in Buffalo. So I know I shouldn't have to be telling anybody this, but this is the Tim Travels tip of the day. If it's icy, um, it's just, just stop, man. Just stop. It's not, there's nothing, yeah. I mean, I can't, I'm, I just don't even know what to say. In fact, I saw a Livestorms Media video yesterday where it was a service road. It was a two, it was a two directional service road in West Memphis, Arkansas, right? And somebody put that it was right near the Flying J. So you know that area that's got all the truck stops in West Memphis, right? Where 55 and uh, 40 run together. A snow plow, and this and this um, road is slightly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, you know, it's it's uh, I can't even think of the word now. But it's basically angled, so when you go around, you know, you you stick to the road. Except when it's icy, guess what happened? There was a truck coming one way and a snow plow going the other way. The snow plow slid down, hit the truck. Then a whole bunch of trucks had like minor head-on and offset collisions right on this little road. There was like five or six trucks and, and, a, and a, you know, a snow plow. Stop, right? And, a, and let, me, let me say this, okay? Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, if it was in the Confederacy or would have been in the Confederacy back in the day, they don't know how to plow, plow snow, stay off the roads, okay? If you're in Union territory, if Yankees were around and, and Yankees lived there, like Michigan, Wisconsin, New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, hey, if there's a snowstorm, they're probably gonna be clearing the roads. Now, if they tell you to stay off the roads, do it. But all these other Southern states, and th by the way, this happens every year in Texas, right? All these guys are like, oh, I'm going to run the 10, 20 because it's warm. Yeah, that's not true. And this happens every year. Don't be a victim. Just shut it down. Okay? Because nobody's going to be there to unload you or load you anyway. Because they can't get to work. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in to my TED Talk, my Tim Talk. Uh, be safe out there. Um, oh, and by the way, even though like things didn't work out exactly how I wanted to today, it's like 75 degrees, so you know I'm walking around in a t-shirt, um, not too shabby. Uh, so yeah, you might not like coming to Southern Cal, but um, things could be things could be worse. So, and by the way, the load I got in here and the load I'm getting out, both paying almost I think three dollars a mile. The load I got going up to Salt Lake City area. It's like 706 miles and it pays just short of $2,100. So, you know, that's that's another advantage. I know, you know, a lot of people don't like running to California or running to New England, but that's where the money is, right? So, um, anyway, 
Take care and we'll talk to you soon.